This video is meant to demonstrate the safe methods of refueling certain types of propane systems on school buses equipped with overfilling prevention devices, OPDs. This video is not meant to be a complete propane refueling training program. Additional training for refueling is required and can be provided by a propane professional. Propane-powered school buses are a safe and economical alternative to buses that run on gasoline or diesel fuel, and they're better for the environment because they have fewer emissions. As with any fuel, you need to know how to use propane safely. That's what this program is about. We'll show you what propane is and how it behaves, the hazards of propane, how to control those hazards, how to prepare for potential incidents, and how to safely fuel a bus with propane. Propane is a fuel that's used for heating, cooking, grilling, and for powering vehicles. In its natural state, propane is a gas. Under pressure, it becomes a liquid, and that's the way it's stored and transported. That's what you can feel sloshing around inside the propane cylinder when you're putting a new cylinder on your barbecue grill. When propane is released to the atmosphere, Liquid propane quickly turns back into a gas, expanding to 270 times its original volume. As a gas, it's colorless and odorless, so an odorant is added to give it a smell that can help you detect leaks. If you've ever seen or used a propane-powered forklift, you already know that propane is a safe, clean, and easy-to-use engine fuel. As a fuel, propane has some hazards that you probably already know about, and some new ones that we need to cover. When you understand the hazards, you can control them, and that will keep you safe on the job. Like gasoline, propane is flammable. It can be ignited by an open flame or any other source of ignition. Because a liquid propane leak expands to a very large volume of gas, the gas can travel far and can reach a distant ignition source. Propane can be ignited by a spark, including a spark from an engine or a spark caused by static electricity. Clothing, especially clothing made from fleece or other synthetic fabrics, can cause you to build up a static charge by simply walking across dry ground. Another hazard is having propane come in contact with your bare skin or eyes. When propane vaporizes, it causes a refrigerating effect that makes everything it touches extremely cold. If it comes in contact with bare skin or your eyes, it can deeply freeze body tissues, sometimes causing severe burns. And finally, Propane is non-toxic, but it can displace air, especially in enclosed spaces, which can lead to asphyxiation. These are all serious hazards, but they are all easily controlled. The best way to avoid all these hazards is to prevent leaks. When you're refueling your propane vehicle fleet, make sure that all equipment is working properly, and make sure that you handle it properly. Checking for leaks is easy. Just remember to smell, look, and listen. As we mentioned before, propane has an odorant called ethyl mercaptan added to it so you can smell if anything is leaking from a connection or service hose. Propane smells like rotten eggs, so the first way to check for leaks is to use your nose. Next, look for any telltale leaking around fittings or hoses. If the fitting or service hose contains liquid propane, the leak will appear as a white mist as the liquid propane escapes to the atmosphere and turns into a gas. Vapor leaks need to be identified with a soap and water solution that causes bubbles to form where the propane is leaking. Finally, listen for the sound of propane escaping your vehicle, propane equipment, or tanks. Any hissing sounds could mean there is a leak. Be certain that any open flames or other sources of ignition are kept away from refueling areas. Before you start refueling your bus, touch your bare hand to a metal fence or some other grounded object to discharge any static buildup. To protect yourself from freeze burns, wear personal protective equipment, often referred to as PPE. Wear coated gloves like these and a long sleeve shirt or jacket, along with safety glasses or goggles to protect your eyes. As with all combustible fuels, even if you follow all safety precautions, you should be prepared in case an incident occurs.
In case of an uncontrolled leak, follow these steps. Start by activating your emergency shutdown switch to close the main valve on the supply tank. Eliminate any sources of ignition. Evacuate the area and call the fire department. To prepare for fires, make sure that you have a fire extinguisher mounted close to the filling area. This should be at least an 18-pound dry chemical extinguisher with a BC rating. Keep in mind, though, that fire extinguishers are not intended to put out propane fires and have a limited application area. They are only effective for small fires, such as those involving combustible materials, and can limit the fire to allow enough time for people to escape the area. And if you come in contact with propane on your bare skin, be aware that this can cause freeze burns that may need medical attention. Now, let's talk about refueling your vehicles. When used as an engine fuel, propane is kept under pressure to maintain it in its liquid form. When propane is in the liquid form, it behaves a lot like gasoline or diesel fuel. It's measured in gallons and travels through a hose from the dispensing station into the vehicle fuel tank. All propane tanks, from huge storage facilities to the tank on your barbecue grill, are filled to 80% of the tank's capacity. This gives the propane room to expand as the outside temperature rises. If the pressure in the tank gets too high, propane can release from the relief valve, and that can cause trouble. To make sure that you don't overfill the propane tanks on your vehicles, each tank is equipped with an Automatic Overfilling Prevention Device, OPD. The OPD is designed to automatically shut down the filler valve once the tank has reached the maximum permitted filling capacity. Your vehicle can be filled safely and reliably using only the OPD. When all your safety practices and preparation are set, you are ready to dispense propane to fuel a bus. The first step is inspection. Motor fuel tanks are built to ASME specifications. ASME is the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Before you fill an ASME fuel tank, it should be inspected. Look for any leaks or visible damage to the school bus's tank, valves, or service lines, and listen for any signs of leaking. Once the fuel system has been inspected, you can refill your vehicle. Now it's time to inspect your dispensing equipment. Take a look at the equipment and check for signs of damage or areas that could be leaking. Check the hose for any signs of wear. Inspect the filler nozzle to ensure that it is in good condition and is not leaking. Be sure to follow any instructions for inspection or operation of your equipment that are provided to you by your propane dealer or supplier. Park the vehicle on level ground to ensure that the tank is properly filled. Set the parking brake and turn off the ignition. Be sure to set wheel chocks if required. Make sure that no one is inside the vehicle and all people and potential ignition sources are at least 25 feet from where the filler nozzle connects to the bus. If your dispensing equipment has a meter, set the propane meter to zero. Remove the filler valve cap by turning the cap counterclockwise. Be sure to keep track of the cap for replacement after refueling. Take a look inside the filler valve. Make sure the O-ring in the filler valve is seated in the groove and is not damaged or missing. Never connect the filler nozzle to the filler valve if the O-ring is missing or damaged. This could result in a release of propane with the potential for injury or fire. Connect the propane filler nozzle to the filler valve and rotate the filler valve nozzle clockwise until it is firmly attached to the filler valve. Be sure the filler nozzle vent valve is closed if equipped. Turn the propane dispenser on. Now, slowly open the valve on the filler nozzle and begin refueling. When the OPD stops the flow of fuel into the tank, close the filler nozzle. Turn the propane dispenser off. Slowly loosen the filler nozzle or slightly open the filler nozzle vent valve, if equipped, to vent any liquid propane trapped between the nozzle and the filler valve. Wait until the pressure releases before completely disconnecting the filler nozzle. Carefully remove the filler nozzle by rotating the nozzle counterclockwise and return it to the dispenser. Then check for leaks on the filler valve and connecting piping before replacing the filler valve cap. Remember, the automatic OPD valve on your vehicle is designed to stop filling when the tank reaches 80% full, which is the tank's maximum propane capacity.
When the dispenser is not in use or any time that a qualified dispenser operator is not present, the dispenser should be shut down and secured. The shutdown procedure should make sure that the dispenser operating valves are closed. Transfer hoses are secured in their designated locations. The dispenser cabinet or fence gates are closed and locked. A propane decal is required on propane-powered vehicles. This decal alerts emergency response personnel that the vehicle has propane containers. The decal should be in the lower right of the rear of the vehicle, above the bumper. Propane is a safe and easy to use fuel for your fleet. You'll see the rewards in better engine life and cleaner emissions too. You've seen how propane behaves and how to protect yourself and others from the potential hazards of using propane. You've also seen, step by step, how to inspect your equipment and how to properly dispense propane into a bus. After a while, refueling your fleet vehicles with propane will become second nature. But don't take shortcuts. Remember that safe propane refueling depends on you. This video is meant to demonstrate the safe methods of refueling certain types of propane systems on school buses equipped with overfilling prevention devices, OPDs. This video is not meant to be a complete propane refueling training program. Additional training for refueling is required and can be provided by a propane professional. PERC and the industry members disclaim any liability for any personal injury, property damage, business losses, or other damages of any nature whatsoever whether special, indirect, consequential, or compensatory, directly or indirectly resulting from the publication, use, or reliance on this video, or any information, apparatus, method, process, or similar item utilized in this video. This disclaimer of liability shall apply even if such loss or damage results in whole or in part from any acts or omissions of or by any negligence on the part of PERC or industry members or any persons who contributed to the development of the information contained in this video. PERC and industry members make no warranty or guarantee as to the accuracy or completeness of any information published in this video. Users of this video should consult the law of their individual jurisdictions for codes, standards, and legal requirements applicable to them. This video is not intended, nor should it be construed to, one, set forth policies or procedures which are the general custom or practice in the propane industry, two, to establish the legal standards of care owed by propane distributors to their customers, or three, to prevent the user from using different methods to implement applicable codes, standards, or legal requirements. By disseminating or publishing this video, PERC is not undertaking to render any professional or other service to or on behalf of any person or entity. PERC and the industry members are not undertaking to perform any duty owed by any person or entity to any third party. Anyone viewing this video should rely on his or her own judgment or, as appropriate, should seek the advice of a competent professional in determining the exercise of reasonable care in any and all circumstances.